Okay, Steamer Joe ready for the part four of the serious assembly. Uh, that little mark aligns perfectly with the piston, number one piston at top dead center, so I'm pretty sure that valve timing is going to be good. Uh, I guess uh, I'm ready to install the head and the valve assembly. And you know, I, I got to thinking, I went upstairs for lunch. Uh, I'm really anxious to see this thing run on steam. But I don't think I will run it on steam until I get a load worked out for it. I, I'm I, Hopefully, my plan is to load it by with an alternator. Mount it to run an alternator without an external voltage regulator so I can modify the field current to modify the load. And uh, fortunately, I read an article about that. The I had thought about using an alternator. And modern alternators, almost all of them, have internal voltage regulators, which is slick. I mean, that's what you need in your car. But for a steam engine, especially one that's depending on the load of the alternator for the entire load to keep it from running away, I mean, at 80 or 100, 100 psi of steam without load, uh, well, I wouldn't want to run this engine that way. So, I'm, uh, so I read where I could, I could put a alternator with an adjustable field. and adjust the load. So until I have that, I probably will just run this on air to test it. Had to reach over there around the cord to the camera to get, so I want to apply some steam cylinder oil to this gasketed surface to the gasket and the surface to help seal it. It's the only sealer I'm going to use on it. <laughs> I'd hate to dump that can of oil over. God, that's, that's, that'd be a mess. Of bolts again, these are 632 stainless machine screws.
it will start it. Looks like that might speed things up, but just the opposite. What in the world? It does such a close fit. I don't suppose it would have hurt me at all to put larger clearance holes in the head. I just, uh, I don't know. I'd rather them be a nice snug fit in there and hold that head precisely where it needs to be. <clears throat> Okay, snug those up, get the valve installed in there. This oil that's got all the word off of there. Okay. Get the valve in. Now this this valve chamber was also dry. I mean cleaned of all oil. So but it oils pretty easy. I'll make sure the valve is slathered full. But I'll put a bunch of oil in the inlet before I blow any air in there and it'll get everything lubed up. Hope there's no paint in there. I didn't try the fit of this valve until just now. Oh, it looks like it's going to go. Notice how It's exactly the right size for this valve, but with that little short piece of, of valve in there, it's really sticky to get it in there until that second one is there to align it. And it works very nicely. Oh, that feels good. Dang. It really feels good. Okay. I think I talked before how this uh, putting oil in the top of this eccentric strap or eccentric shaft oil runs down through the center of it into this hole and in this one it runs down in to lubricate the top bearing on the in the crank or the crank case
turn. Okay, the other end. The end on the eccentric shaft just stays on there by gravity. And there's a pin with a cotter key that holds it at the valve actuation end. All right. I think I'll, here's the flywheel, I think I'll put it on there, and see what this feels like to turn, make it easier to turn for sure. Sure, I get that in that flat. There it is. Now this is a quarter inch, quarter twenty-eight set screw, so I can put some power on that. Well. Nice. Nice. I'm a firm believer in believer in slathering with oil. You might have heard me talk about it with most of my machine tools I keep them slathered with oil. Well hey, there we go. Assembly nearly complete. I gotta get it bolted to the box bed bolted to the mounting plate, get the insulation around the cylinders and cover it with the with this lagging steel and uh, won't be long be able to test it. Till later.